Hello everyone and welcome to your lecture on measures of morbidity. We will get started. So what are we covering today? We will be covering a few measures of morbidity which is prevalence, incidence and what is the relationship between prevalence and incidence. Why is this sort of information important for you? It is because this sort of information will help you to understand how to interpret research articles, governmental reports. For instance, if you have a statement like this in one of your research articles, 300 infant deaths under one year of age um, per 1000 live births in 2020, what exactly does this mean? Alright, so in this lecture series that I will be taking various lecture series on epidemiology, we will be covering these sort of concepts which will help you to understand and prepare well for your research journey. And uh, this sort of information um, is also very important when you go for your job interviews is because um, I have been through several job interviews and I have seen that sometimes they pop these sort of questions especially where they are looking for a dual position where you are a clinical dietitian and you have a research focused role as well. So if you are applying for such sort of position these are the basic skills that are very important for you to be cultivating. Alright, so these are the key measures of morbidity that we will be covering in today's lecture. Alright, so what is the very basic goal of epidemiology? It is to improve the overall health of the population by reducing morbidity and mortality. And today as I said that we will be covering measures of morbidity. So what does morbidity mean? Morbidity means diseases, sickness. Alright. So it is um, people who are having the disease, people who are having sick um, or people who are sick. So this is what we are covering today. In um, the coming lecture series, we will be also looking at measures of mortality, which is um, death. All right. So this is the difference between morbidity and mortality. Today we are going to look at measures of morbidity. All right. So yep. Yeah. To achieve the goal which is to um, address and to um, understand the overall health of the population, you need to understand how to quantify morbidity and mortality. And in today's lecture series, you are learning how to quantify morbidity through understanding prevalence and incidence. Alright, so first is prevalence. So what is prevalence? In very simple layman terms, prevalence means the population already has the disease condition, all right. The disease condition is existing within the population. You are studying a population and people have diabetes for the past 5 years, 10 years, 15 years. So they are already having the disease, all right. So, um, yeah, so that is the definition which is what proportion of the population actually has the disease at a specific given point of time. Now there are a common type of prevalence and the most basic ones which we see in our area of nutrition research is point prevalence. So what is point prevalence? It is what proportion of the population has the disease at a specific time point. Uh, for instance, people are um, currently having COVID, um, data collected today. So um, how many people are um, having um, COVID today when you are doing a survey in Griffith University, right? Then you have period prevalence. What is period prevalence? It is what proportion of population has the disease at a, any point during a given time period, meaning in the past 12 months. So you are doing a survey again at Griffith University and in your survey, your, in your questionnaire you have a question which is have you had COVID in the past 12 months, alright. So that is your period prevalence. It is over a period of time. Point prevalence is very cross-sectional which is um, just a snapshot for instance data that you collect today. Then you have lifetime prevalence which is what proportion of the population had the disease at some point in their life. Alright, so have you ever had COVID in your lifetime? So maybe these are the sort of questionnaires which we will be asking people to complete maybe 5 years down the track in 2030 um, or elsewhere we may ask people that have you ever had COVID in your lifetime? So that is lifetime prevalence. So I hope this is clear the definitions of point prevalence, period prevalence 
and lifetime prevalence. Okay, moving further. Now, how do we calculate, how do we quantify prevalence? This is a very, very simple calculation. So, do not get overwhelmed. All right. So, again, um, what is the formula or um, the understanding to how to calculate prevalence? It is total number of people with a disease at a given time point divided by total number of people in a population at the same given time point. And with this example, this formula will make more sense. So, for instance, you have taken a survey of 1150 women, total number of women who gave birth at the Gold Coast Hospital in April 2020. And a, um, from this total number of women, we had 468 women who were reporting that they were taking multivitamins at least four times a week during that month. Okay, So, you did a survey in April 2020 and during that month, um, there were 468 women who reported that they were taking multivitamins at least four times in a week. So, now you have to calculate the prevalence of the frequent multivitamin use in this group. All right. So, again very simple calculation. Your numerator is the number of women who are multivitamin users which is 468. Then you have your denominator which is total number of women which you have 1150. So, prevalence is your numerator 468 divided by the denominator 1150. And then you multiply it into 100 if you want to report prevalence as a percentage. Okay, And in this case, I want to report prevalence as a percentage. When I do this simple calculation, my answer is 40.69%. Um, okay, So, this is the prevalence of frequent multivitamin users within this group, which is women who gave birth in the Gold Coast Hospital in the month of April 2020. All right, Within this, um, around say 40.69% of women we are having multivitamins. So, prevalence is generally reported as a percentage, how we have done in this example, all right? or else it is also expressed in research papers as per 100, per 1000, per 10,000, per 100,000 people. Okay? So, um, I hope this calculation is uh, simple and easy to understand. It is um, it's a very simple calculation, which is how do you compute prevalence? And um, this is how these are the type of say statements you will find in research paper where they say the prevalence of diabetes in this population is say um, uh, 40,000 um, um, people or say um, 400,000 people per um, thousand. So, these are the type of numbers which you find in research paper. So, this helps you to understand what exactly does prevalence mean. It means again go back to the basics prevalence means that the population already has the disease condition of interest that you are studying. Okay? Now, moving further, incidence. So, what is incidence? The main difference between prevalence and incidence is that incidence is where people have newly acquired the disease. For instance, in prevalence, they already have the disease. People who are diagnosed with um, type 2 diabetes, these are newly diagnosed people this is your incidence. All right? So, you are going in the population and in your survey you have um, when did you get di uh, diabetes? This is very newly acquired. They have acquired only in this month or only in this year. This is your say incidence time frame or else then you have other people who have had diabetes for the past 5 years, 10 years. So, people who already have the disease from a longer period of time that is prevalence, people who have newly acquired the disease, that is your incidence. So, I hope this is clear, what is the difference between incidence and prevalence. All right. So, in incidence is for example, somebody being um, a COVID positive, all right, so today. So, that is your incidence. Okay. So, what are the common type of incidence? You have incidence proportion. It is also called as the cumulative incidence or attack rate and then you have the incidence rate. So, the main difference between both of these is rather than reading the technical definition, I will again go back to the main concept. Incidence proportion is cross sectional in nature, All right? uh, meaning it is a quick snapshot, one quick snapshot of what is happening in the uh, population. Incidence rate 
it takes the unit of time into consideration and it is over a period of time okay so it is longitudinal in nature it is expressed as person week person days or person hour meaning the unit of time could be in weeks it could be in days it could be in hours all right so that is your incidence rate incidence proportion is just a quick snapshot that in this time period this is what's happening okay so with an example in the coming slide uh, it will make more sense to you but um, yes so basically in this slide the most important information is incidence is newly acquired disease condition two main common types of incidence is incidence proportion and incidence rate incidence proportion cross sectional in nature incidence rate is longitudinal in nature takes time into consideration and the unit of expression for incidence rate is it does not flow through your tongue very easily but it is person week person days or person hour okay so now let's look at an example so this is an example we have and we are told to calculate the incidence proportion cross sectional and incidence rate which is longitudinal okay so for instance you have these um 10 patients and they have covid and they have taken the um covid vaccine okay coronavirus vaccine they have taken and you want to see their rate of recovery okay so you have these 10 people from these 10 people you have three people and that's over here if you see this three people they have recovered in the first week they took the vaccine and they quickly recovered in one week nobody recovered in the second week in the third week after taking the vaccine one person recovered three more people recovered in the fourth week all right after taking the vaccine and week 5 is when the trial ended and there were still three people in red who did not recover at all so they were still covid positive even after taking the vaccine okay so basically that is what um it means over here so i hope this makes sense so we have 10 participants 10 subjects and this is their rate of recovery over a five year for over a five week period okay so now we move on to the next slide so now first we are calculating is incidence proportion all right so abbreviation what i have done is ip over here what is your total sample size in this example it is 10 participants all right so we know in the previous table we have 10 participants we know seven of them recovered so going back you have 1 2 3 all of these blue ones are recovery so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay and three of them have not recovered seven have recovered so you have a uh, 10 people in total seven have recovered so your incidence proportion is a very very simple calculation it's a quick snapshot so you have 7 divided by 10 and then you multiply it into 100 um when you want to express it as a percentage and you can say on average 70% people recovered from coronavirus um after taking the vaccine in a 5 week period okay it does not take the rate of recovery into consideration meaning three people recovered in week 1 one person be recovered in week 3 it does not take all that into consideration it is just a quick snapshot it will tell you look overall 70% people recovered after taking this coronavirus vaccine okay so that is your incidence proportion it's a quick snapshot um and it ends over there now we have incidence rate the formula for incidence rate is you have um basically it um you calculate person time over here what is the unit of time it is weeks so you have week 1 week 2 week 3 week 4 week 5 so our unit of time is in weeks it is not in it is not in days it is not in minutes it is not in hours it is in weeks all right why am i emphasizing on this is because um your unit of week may differ from example to example over here our unit of time is in weeks okay so here you take the um time rate into consideration okay and this sort of incidence rate is also very useful when you have two groups one is having coronavirus vaccine the other one is having placebo so they are not having coronavirus vaccine they are having something else and you want to see the rate of uh, recovery between these two okay or else you have vaccine 1 versus vaccine 2 
okay so you may have pfizer versus astrazeneca and you want to see which one is much better or superior all right so when you have two groups you can do incidence rate calculation as well over here in our example we just have one group one vaccine let's just say this is um, astrazeneca okay and we have 10 people taking astrazeneca and we are looking at the rate of recovery okay um, in your uh, workshops we will have the opportunity to practice a lot more examples um, in person that is where i'll be giving you a lot more um, examples uh, for your preparation for your exams for your multiple choice so on and so forth all right so right now we are here to understand the concepts and how do you calculate okay but we will do more practice in your workshops right so here guys the formula is you have you put in the person over here so we have three people and then you multiply it by time what is time one week so what is this three people and one week if we go back it is these three people who recovered in week one so i hope that makes sense okay so three people recovered in week one one person recovered in week three three people recovered in week four and all of these are multi uh, multiplication signs and then you have in between addition signs okay and then you have the last one uh, i have put it in red so to emphasize you also take into consideration the number of people who did not recover all right so we have these three people who did not recover in week five you take them into consideration as well you do this calculation your answer will be 33 remember the board mass rule what is the board mass rule whatever is in the bracket first do that and then do the addition okay so bracket needs to be solved first before you start adding things up okay then you have you know that in total seven people have recovered okay so that that fact does not change you have seven people recovered which you used in the incidence proportion formula seven people recovered in your incidence rate formula as well that does not change so in total seven people recovered so what do you do you do 7 divided by 33 where did you get this 33 you did this calculation above that's where you got your 33 all right and then this is the answer you will get all right so it is 0 0.21 okay and uh, you multiply it into 100 and as i said that the unit of expression for incidence rate is not very um, simple it does not just flow through your tongue so basically the way you would write this answer and which you would see in research papers as well is 21.21 people person per 100 person week is the recovery rate all right so that is your incidence rate in this example okay so yes i understand that this is quite um funny to read and it's not something which you may be used to but the more you go into research the more you go into reading big epidemiological data set governmental reports this is how data is actually reported in real life okay so it may look a bit funny but um, it's your introduction to um, the funniness of epidemiology not sure how many people find this funny but yeah it's um, it's quite tricky to read it just like that person week all right but i hope the calculation is simple and it's understandable guys and you are clear between the concepts of incidence proportion and incidence rate okay now moving on to the relationship between your uh, prevalence and incidence okay so i have taken a few examples for you to understand the relationship between prevalence and incidence so let's take case number one it's an acute case so remember what is the difference between acute and chronic acute is something which happens um, quickly and something which is addressed quickly chronic is something which stays for a very very long period of time and we are referring to disease conditions over here so for example when people get covid it is an acute condition a lot of us get covid we recover from it in a couple of weeks time and we move on with our life you have then chronic condition like type 2 diabetes like um, cardiovascular diseases which um, people have to um, manage their life with these chronic disease condition okay so this is what i mean by acute versus a uh, chronic in this examples all right so your case one is an acute example where you have a covid and let's go back to the year 2019 where covid started um, and it was a big pandemic and we had no covid vaccines at that time we were all just trying to figure out what's happening 
so yes uh, what was the condition what was the scenario i'll go i'll go i'll be going through each of these lines for you so in 2019 when covid was a big outburst we had no cure we had no vaccinations okay so when you have a condition when there is no cure what happens you have increased incidence a lot of people were being diagnosed with um, covid increased prevalence a lot of people kept getting covid so you got covid you recovered and then you again got covid and you recovered so yes um increase incidence increase prevalence and increase death rate especially as well all right so over here everything is increasing so when you have a acute um say pandemic you have increased incidence you have increased prevalence you have increased death rate okay because there is no cure all right so this is the relationship over here in this example between incidence and prevalence where incidence is also increasing prevalence is also increasing okay um so this was the condition in 2019 now let's come to 2022 all right so now you have um case number um this is an example number 2 again it's an acute case all right now we have uh, by 2002 things started looking better and we definitely had majority of the population receiving covid vaccine um not just one two but even the third booster shot so yes the population was very well vaccinated meaning cure was increasing vaccination was increasing so what happens so you have decrease in prevalence you have decrease in incidence okay so both of these um say figures were going down um compared to 2019 there were not as many incidence of covid in 2022 prevalence similarly was going down it was not that people were getting covid so frequently now um why because they were vaccinated so it's not that you would fall ill to covid very quickly all right and that a rate also decreased okay so in an acute condition when you have a cure for the acute condition you have a decrease in incidence you have a decrease in prevalence and you have a decrease in death rate as well okay so uh, these are the examples for acute condition um one scenario where there is no cure everything increases other scenario in an acute condition when there is a cure um things decrease okay then you have case 3 example 3 which is a chronic condition like type 2 diabetes till date um we haven't found a cure for type 2 diabetes we are managing type 2 diabetes with oral hypoglycemic agents or with insulin all right so the i have used the term cure but remember guys it is basically management all right so the management is there for type 2 diabetes all right it is constant okay so we are managing people when people get diabetes they manage their diabetes with medications with insulin okay so that is constant then there are many lifestyle factors which will dictate whether in your population you have a increase in prevalence or you just have a constant prevalence um similarly depending upon various lifestyle factors such as your age and your dietary choices and your physical activity levels and stress levels and the environmental determinants like smoking pollution all of that many many things will decide whether you have a constant incidence rate or you have a um increase in incidence rate okay so in chronic condition you may have um, your cure is constant why is it constant because you are managing it it is not technically a cure you are just managing the condition and then your prevalence and your incidence rate may also be stagnant it may be a plateau effect or else it may be increased or it, or else it could be also decreased depends upon various lifestyle scenarios in the case of type 2 diabetes but one thing which is definitely there is decreased death rate so the number of people who are who are dying because of diabetes in today's world is much less than compared to in the 1950s 1930s 1940s when you did not have this level of advanced insulin management and oral hypoglycemic agents and medications okay so that is the difference when you have chronic conditions and when your cure is constant or your management is constant you definitely have decreased death rate because of that disease condition um but yes your prevalence and your incidence rate does it go up down or constant 
all that will be determined by various um, lifestyle factors in the case of type 2 diabetes okay so um, it's much more complicated when it comes to chronic disease condition and the relationship which you have between incidence and prevalence okay um, this is just an FYI guide to help um, help you out is a uh, prevalence is useful for measuring chronic diseases okay which span over a longer duration of time okay because they have a higher disease burden that is where prevalence is definitely measured because it's for a longer duration all right incidence is uh, generally reported for acute condition which quickly come they create a big rampage and then they quickly go away and guys, this is a YouTube video which explains the relationship between incidence and prevalence uh, very well. So, this is again as an FYI to help you understand the topic better. Okay, so um, that's it guys. That's my uh, lecture for you on the um, measures of morbidity and I'll see you in the next lecture series. Thank you.